So here we have 1200 Bandit. Um, gets used semi regularly, but uh, I think maybe a couple of the pilot jets have got blocked. Um, it'll occasionally stall the tidal. So I'm going to go through the carbs, make sure it's okay, give the rest of the bike a, a good check over, and uh, go from there. Okay, so getting the carbs out. <clears throat> Take the lid off the airbox. Undo clamps front and rear. Push the airbox back. Can't take it out because you've got the frame rails here, but push it back as far as you can. Uh, get hoses out of the way so you can pull it all the way back. And that'll give you just enough room. Uh, cables. Loosen the lock nut on the front one. Just pop it out of the holder. Don't try and take them off the carbs because it'd just be a nightmare. Easiest way, take the cables off the throttle and take the cables out. A bit fiddly, but you can squeeze out. Um, all right, get back in a sec. Choke cable over this side needs to come off. I just pull it and then fiddle around getting it out of the, the holder just there. A little awkward, but get some long pliers and work it round. And then, as you can see, there's just enough room to clear the carbs. So then you have to squeeze them out the side. All right. Oh yeah, disconnect the throttle position sensor. Oop, just there, easy enough. Push the tab in, pull it up. Handy hint, I'm trying to get the carbs out. Move the airbox back as far as you can and then find a way to strap it back. Got a bungee, just pulling it all the way back. Just means the airbox doesn't keep falling forwards so you still got the room. All right. Okay, so it's been a while since I've done one of these bandits and I'd forgotten that there's actually a couple of extra screws to hold the airbox. And the reason I was still able to move the airbox um, and do everything without taking them out was because they were missing already. Um, so to get to them, you have to take the tailpiece off, which is pass remove passenger grab handles. Uh, little grommet stood there, which one's obviously been repaired. Uh, screws there and there, and another screw oop, underneath here, yeah. and then the whole thing slides back, connector for the brake light, and then we can get to these and put screws in, uh, and then it'll all be a bit more secure. As you can see, there's just enough room to get it out. Fuel hose can get a bit caught up, but generally, if it comes, there we go. Oh, didn't catch that, but, and they're out. Handy hint, when you take the carbs off, don't just lay them on the back on the bench, because you'll get fuel dripping everywhere. Yeah. Um, you will have lots of fuel in the fog bowls, so you want to drain it out into a tub. Just crack those open. You don't need to take the screw out. Just a couple of turns will do it. It'll start dribbling. Do all four of them before you start doing anything else. So drain fuel in something clean. And as long as the fuel looks clean, you can put it back in the tank. Obviously with the price of petrol nowadays, um, I'll save as much as you can. Oh, and remember to re retighten the float ball screws. Um, just so when you put it back on the bike, you don't have fuel pouring out later on. Okay, so these carbs have obviously been worked on before as they've got Allen's um, holding the float balls on. Um, makes it much easier. But if you have the original screws in there, before you start trying to take them out, just put a drift on there, give it a quick tap on the top, 
Um, it just helps get them a little bit loose. Not a hard tap because you really don't want to be breaking this sort of stuff. All right. Okay, we're in. <clears throat> so taking off the throttle cables, um, just because when you're working on the carbs, they tend to flap around and get in the way. Um, remember when you put it all back together, there's two left and two right float bowls. If you mix them up, um, you can't get to the drain screws. Um, they'll still fit, but you won't be able to drain it on the bike. And then, here we go. We've got, let's see, let's get a pointer. Uh, mixture screw. Um, pilot jet. Main jet. Um, float needle seat. We'll see. Now you get your float and your float needle. Um, that's the basics of that. Okay, so once this bike was running, um, now I've got the pilot jets out. Um, easiest way to check if they're blocked is to look through them. So give them a quick blow just to get any residual um, fuel out of it and then have a look down and you can see down that one See the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, this one. Oh, yeah, you can just about. That's, but you can, oh, it's a little smaller. That's my last one. Yeah, right, cool. Camera's having trouble focusing here. No, I couldn't see anything through that one. Let's try the last one. <laughs> Again, I don't see any light through that. So that means they're clogged. Uh, there's a reason it's stumbling at idle. This will only affect, this circuit will only really affect it at idle and just off idle um, so the bike will run on choke but when you shut off the choke it'll hesitate it'll die um, you can hold it on the throttle and some people just turn up the idle um, but what that's going to do is put you onto the next circuit and when you come off the throttle the revs will hang up um, and come down maybe slowly, um, which is obviously not ideal. So now we're going to clean these out. Now what I do, you can get solutions um, to leave these overnight. Uh, Yamalube used to do a really good one. I think they've stopped doing it. But you can get these tiny micro drills from um, places like Machine Mart, eBay, that sort of stuff. Um, and you can use those, obviously you're not going to drill it, um, but you find the smallest one that will fit and just push it through by hand and that helps clean it. All right. All right. So the number on the jets is 37. Um, doesn't seem to correspond to any physical size because the drill bit on the left there is a... 0.35 of a mil, I'm assuming. And the one on the right is a 0.3. The 0.35 won't go through the 37 jet, um, but the 0.3 will. All right. So just about to see. And so as a jet, you just take the drill bit and just very gently put it in. And just move it backwards and forwards a bit. Rotate the jet a bit. And just the rough edges on the tiny drill bit. Just open it up just enough. I mean, this is. If you've got poor eyesight, get a magnifying glass. Um, and then. I don't think we can. 
No, can't get clear enough shot on that one. Let's see. Maybe if we go. <clears throat> to the light. Ah. Just that. Okay. Just like you just see light to it. Alright, so that one's good. Do the others. I'll go from there. Alright, next up is the mixture needle. Um screw it out before you screw it out, screw it in and count the number of turns because that's where it's set. Uh, this one was at two turns out. Um, just take it out and have a quick look at the look at the tip. Wow, looking through the camera. Um, yeah, just wipe off the tip. Yeah, it won't be much. But then you may find that other bits fall out. So there's an O-ring, which is actually still in there, not there. Um, so it's O-ring, washer, spring, needle, all right? Not washer, O-ring, spring, needle, that's a long way around, all right? And then with these carbs, the um, float needle seats are separate on some bikes, they're built into the carbs. So these do come out. Uh, a couple of them just fell out because, um, as you can see, the O-rings have gone all hard and cracked. Um, so you may need to replace those. Um, generally, you can use them out of one of the generic kits, O-ring kits, if you've... That's one out of that kit. And that's, as you can see, there's an old one that's a bit squared off. Um, it's not critical um because it's not even if it leaks it's not gonna gush through um it's still going to be metered um and with these carbs when the engines shut when the engine shut off the fuel taps shut off too um so it's not like it's going to be a big issue but it can in extreme situations cause overfueling all right uh full needles uh just give them a quick shake, make sure there's no fluid in them. If you suspect it's got fluid in, um, put it in a cup of water and hold it under, see if anything bubbles out. If stuff bubbles out, uh, then you need to replace it. Because uh, obviously if it's got fluid in, it's not going to float like it should. And then a the float needle. Uh, just... Make sure the tip, tip feels rubbery. So not all of them are rubber. Um, some of them are just a metal brass tip. Um, make sure it's not worn. And you can see this has got a proper triangular or do, um, cone shape to it. Um, as they get worn where they're sitting on the seats, um, they can um, just develop a ridge and it'll leak through there. And sometimes when you've when they've been sitting a long time, it'll stick to the seat. And as soon as you start using it, it'll tear off and it'll just leak fluid and you'll get it overflowing. Um, the other thing that can happen with them on the other end is let's see if I can do this with my hand. Uh, you see the little brass plunger there, that's sprung loaded. You just want to make sure that that springs. All right. As long as that's good. Now, if that's if that's sticking, um, just get some brake cleaner on there, let it soak a little, um, and then just work it up and down, and it should free off. All right. Quick look at the slide and the slide needle. Um, once you've got the cap off, so spring in there. Make sure that isn't all folded and bent. Um, sometimes when you put them in back in people fold them up and they really don't like that um and then trying to get the diaphragm out you're going to be really careful because they can stick um this one's obviously a little old yeah it doesn't want to move all right all right so i have to go in and 
gently picking out the edge. Okay, so I've just got in there and just lifted a little and then the rest comes out relatively easy. All right. There we go. And it comes. Do -do. Um, now on these carbs, there's an extra little o-ring there. Don't lose it. Um, there's a good chance it'll fall out and it'll disappear. Now uh, some CV carbs like this still have that, but that little o-ring is part of the diaphragm. All right. So just be aware. All right. So. Needle looks pretty clean. I'd say this is an aftermarket one. Let's have a look. Right now. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, OEM ones on some earlier bikes, they were um, adjustable, uh, but generally the adjustable ones are aftermarket. Um, yeah. So, obviously, this is. All right. There's a sort of clip. It's on one, two, three, fourth groove down. Obviously, the lower the clip, the higher the needle, the richer the mid range. All right. And there's basically on this one, there's a washer, there's a spacer, and then there's a clip. Now, the washer and spacer, I think, are originals. Um, obviously, different bikes vary. And that little spacer sits on top and the spring sits on top of that and holds this in place um you know like i say the diaphragm is is it's seen better days but it's still doing its job it's not there's no holes in it one way to tell if it's got hole in it is to the carbs and just there should be you should feel some damping effect and be able to just feel some resistance as you push it and it comes down slower. All right. Do, do, do. All right. With this slightly uh, old diaphragm, it's going to be tricky to get the whole thing to seat properly because obviously it's just a little bigger and it just keeps popping out so putting a little grease in the groove before you try and fit it that helps um because the grease is a bit tacky holds it in there um but yeah be patient and once you've got the cap on just make sure it's it's in the right position okay finally managed to get the diaphragm in um took a bit of persuading Say a little bit of grease in the groove and then popping it in there. If the first one you do is a complete nightmare and you don't want to do the rest, you can still check the condition of the needle by just pulling up. Um, basically, it'll look gummy. I mean, if it's a silver one, it'll look copper um, or brass. Unfortunately, these are brass anyway, but they look clean. Um, if you really need, feel you need to clean them, um, you know, hold it open uh, a little bit of you know, you've got to be careful but a little bit of wire wool maybe um, just to clean off any gunk on there because obviously if the varnish builds up on the needle it'll reduce the the flow um, you know, these are fine but uh, it's only if it's been sitting for a long long time and then you know You'll basically pull the float balls off and it'll be a uh, green fungus in there. Um, and you'll know that you need to do a lot of work. Okay, a way to just check out uh, the pilot circuit is get a bit of brake cleaner or even WD with it. Spray it into pilot jet. And then we'll grab All right. Just, just quick and it, it should come out here just about saw that um, and then also it will come out well where your mixture screw is down below that in the carb is 
you might have to open the, the butterfly a little but you can just see a little hole there it should come out there as well all right so if you put the fluid in you can see it come out it makes it more obvious all right and that if it comes out both um front and back uh that circuit should be clear all right mostly together uh, we've just come outside hopefully won't start raining soon um it's just so we can run it and synchronize the throttle bodies carbs balance the carbs whatever you want to call it um as you can see looking at the gauges yeah that one's slightly off from that one which is slightly off from those two so not ideal let's turn the idle up a bit i will turn that down a fraction again get the engine warm. Alright. Okay, so I don't have a standalone fuel bottle so I've got the tank propped up rather precariously so I've got to be careful. Um, but we are going to try and get to where I... You're looking for the adjusters. There we go between the carbs so if I can get it to focus on that get that out of the way just down there see it just that little screw so one of the carbs is the master carb so that's the one that the throttle controls you can just about see it now so on this bike so next adjuster wow these are a lot more difficult when there's a tank on it uh, okay so what we'll do first we'll balance two and three using the screw we can see so let's go oh start it up oh, suzuki it's clutching uh. all right back uh so see obviously two of them are way out messing around got them pretty close uh, one tip if you are adjusting it take the screwdriver off the adjuster because that can affect where it sits so adjust take the pressure off then check it and you may have to turn the idle down as you get it closer and closer um, but that's yeah Pretty happy with that. Coming quite nicely. All right. Okay. So to show you. Okay. Let's show you where these screws are. So you can see that one just there. So that adjusts between three and four. Number three is your master. So you're balancing everything to that. And then you can see, hopefully, 
just there. That's the screw to adjust between three and two. Very fiddly. And then over here. Where's it? Yep, right there in the middle. Uh, there. All right. So best way to do it is balance uh, one and two together. Balance three and four together. And then balance the two pairs together as well. All right? Cool.